individually we are just one drop and together we are an ocean analogously individual intelligence is only about one idea whereas collective intelligence is about a pool of ideas inspired by this quote on collective intelligence i will like to start my presentation entitled synergizing the collective knowledge building portals so first of all let us start to talk about what is collective intelligence collective intelligence is shared or group intelligence possessed by a group of individuals there is a very famous example signifying the importance of collective intelligence where many people are asked to estimate the number of gems or candies in a jar although nobody will guess it right or everybody will have their own estimates like 1800 870 800 900 but if we take the mean of all those estimates then the mean will come very near to the actual number of gems in the jar so this is the power of collective intelligence so collective intelligence this very term was coined by francis galton in a fair in this particular fair many people were asked to estimate the weight of an ox although nobody guessed it right but when francis galton took the mean of all those estimates it was coming very near to the actual weight of the ox so this is how collective intelligence the term collective intelligence was coined there is one another very famous example of collective intelligence called darpa balloon challenge so darpa is a defense agency in us darpa it held a competition where many balloons were erected in different parts of the us there were many teams uh, these teams were asked to estimate the location of all these balloons this challenge was won by mit team in a in a record time of 9 hours so what they did, so what did they use they used a technique called multi level marketing in this very particular technique they hired various individuals or teams in various parts of the us so for example if a person in washington uh, told that this particular balloon is erected at this particular coordinates so he would get uh, $4000 and the person who invited this particular person in washington will get $2000 okay and the person who invited the this person will get $1000 in this way mit team distributed a sum of about $40000 to various individuals in us and won the challenge in a record time of 9 hours there is also a very famous game called folded puzzle folded puzzle is uh, particularly a multiplayer game where various people or various members of the team they are asked to estimate or they are asked to discern the protein folding structure okay first of all let me tell you what is a protein folding structure a protein folding structure is discerned uh, so as to know the functioning of the protein in the human body okay this is a very uh, prominent problem in biology so there is a particular protein uh, whose fo protein folding structure has eluded scientists for many years but with the help of this online game this online multiplayer game the protein folding structure of that particular protein was discerned okay and uh, this again showed the power of collective intelligence So now the question comes if a group of individuals come together does it only give rise to collective intelligence the answer is no because there have been instances in the past where it has given rise to collective inaptitude or collective stupidity and not collective intelligence so there is a premise that the individuals involved should be intelligent during world war 2 hitler wanted to get away with some criminals so he sent them on a mission from germany to britain hitler very much knew that these criminals won't be able to handle such a complex situation so they would end up getting caught by british officials and this is what happened so this is an example of collective inaptitude where the individuals involved were not competent enough to handle such a complex situations and it ultimately gave rise to collective inaptitude instead of collective intelligence however in this presentation we will concentrate on collective intelligence instead of collective inaptitude collective intelligence has given rise to many crowdsourced knowledge building portals so first of all let me tell you what is knowledge building 
Knowledge building is the curation of new ideas as a result of the ideas present in the system. We have various knowledge building portals. We have like Wikipedia, GitHub, Quora and Stack Exchange. If we observe, we have two major types of knowledge building portals. We have Wikipedia, which acts as a knowledge archival facility where many users come and write information in the form of articles. On the other hand, we have Q&A portals like Quora and Stack Exchange where knowledge is built in the form of questions and answers. Here, the questions are asked by the users and they are also answered by the users. We have GitHub also, which acts as a crowdsourced code development portal. Okay? But in this presentation, we will concentrate on two major types of crowdsourced knowledge building portals, that is wiki portals and the Q&A portals. So as discussed above, we have two major modes of knowledge development, that is discussion and archival. Our hypothesis is that every discussion should be archived and every archival should be discussed. This is because the archivals that are made on knowledge building portals, they are sometimes not appropriate. Appropriate in the sense there are sometimes knowledge gaps and it hinders the understanding of the underlying concept. That is, how, that is why every archive should be discussed. In that case, the knowledge gaps can be pointed out and the knowledge gaps that are present in the archivals can be filled also. On the other hand, every discussion should be archived. Because we have seen in knowledge building portals that the discussion, they go, they grow to thousands of posts. So it becomes difficult for the users to point out the information that he or she is seeking. So in that case also, the discussion should be archived in an organized manner. That is why every discussion should be archived. This is why we propose the union of wiki forum and Q&A forum. The archival mode of the knowledge development is exhibited by Wikiforum and the discussion mode of knowledge development is, exhi is exhibited by q &A Forum. We introduce the union of two types of knowledge building portals that is Wikiportal and the q &A Forum. We call this union as QWiki. So let us go through the contents of this presentation first. First of all, we will discuss the importance of Q&A forum in QWiki. We will discuss the literature in this direction and work done in this direction which is in the form of knowledge acquisition. Then we will discuss the importance of wiki portal in QWiki. Here we will first discuss the literature in this direction and then we will discuss the work done in this direction which is in the form of knowledge building. And then we will discuss the comparison of two types of discussion environments. First of all, let me tell you, in Wikipedia, we already have a discussion environment which is called Talk Pages. In Talk Pages, we majorly discuss the improvements related to the article. But in our QWiki, we have a Q&A forum instead of this discussion environment, Talk Pages. In order to complete our thesis, we had a comparative analysis of these two discussion environments, that is Q&A forum and Talk Pages. We will discuss in detail regarding these two environments. And at last, we will discuss the application of QWiki in an online learning environment. So in order to prove our hypothesis, we deployed QWiki for an NPTEL course called The Joy of Computing Using Python. This particular QWiki portal was called GOC Wiki. So as you can see here, we have a wiki article. In this particular wiki article, the students used to populate uh, a lot of information. And in, in interaction with every wiki article, we used to have a Q&A forum. In this particular Q&A forum, the students used to ask questions related to that wiki article only. Uh, in GOC, uh, the joy of computing using Python, we had 12 weeks. So we had 12 wiki articles and interaction with those wiki articles, we had 12 Q&A forums. And it was like mandatory for the students to ask questions related to that particular week only on the particular Q&A forum, on the respective Q&A forum. So now, first of all, let us discuss about uh, importance of Q&A forum in QWiki. As stated above, first we will be discussing the literature in this direction. 
So, uh, according to the founder of Wikipedia, Jimmy Wales, he states that 99% of the content on Wikipedia is like populated by only 2% of the Wikipedia users. So, what are the rest of the users involved in? So, the rest of the users, they are involved in reading Wikipedia as compared to writing on Wikipedia or as compared to producing information on Wikipedia. But there is a problem here. Since majority of the Wikipedia users are readers, its readability should be good. First of all, let me define what is readability. Readability is the ease of understanding the underlying text. As uh, stated in the past literature, the readability of Wikipedia articles is not good. As if we compare the readability of Wikipedia articles using conventional readability metrics like fleshkin cal readability score or Coleman new read uh, readability score, if we uh, calculate readability score using these conventional readability metrics, then the previous studies, uh, they have stated that the readability of Wikipedia articles is below satisfactory level. So this is a matter of concern. Since ma majority of the Wikipedia users, they are readers, the readability of Wikipedia articles should be very, very good. But instead, it is very low. Now, in many of the online communities, reading is considered as a free riding. Okay, uh, so what if we have more readers on Wikipedia? It is the producers or it is the other 2% of the users who produce information. So only we should concentrate on the 2% of the US. Why are we even cons considering the readers of Wikipedia? So in most of the online communities, reading is considered as free writing. But this is not so in Wikipedia. According to the past studies, it is the readers who become editors in Wikipedia. First of all, they start with editing uh, Wikipedia articles like editing grammatical errors here and there. But eventually they gravitate towards the bigger roles of editing mass amount of information on Wikipedia. So it is the readers only who evolve to be editors or producers of information on Wikipedia. So it is very important to attract more and more readers to the Wikipedia on uh, to Wikipedia. Also, uh, one of the studies done by Akali et al. Um, he says that only 80% of the Wikipedia studies, they are producer based studies, that is their editor based studies. Only 20% of the Wikipedia studies, they are basically consumer based studies. Okay, so there is a need to contribute more and more to Wikipedia from a consumer's perspective or from a consumer's point of view. So now we have discussed the literature in this direction. So now let us discuss uh, what is the work done in this direction. The work done in this, in this direction is in the form of knowledge acquisition. So first of all, what is knowledge acquisition? Knowledge acquisition is the acquiring of the knowledge that is the acquisition of the knowledge that is present in the underlying text or if you can see uh, you can say that the comprehension of the information that is present in the underlying text so if we talk about the standard or conventional readability metrics they are only based on the fact that uh, the smaller sentences they are easier to read as compared to the longer sentences Okay. And we have seen that in the past, the readability of Wikipedia articles, it has only been calculated using these conventional readability metrics. So what is the conclusion here? This is not enough. The fact that only shorter sentences are easier to read and longer sentences are uh, difficult to read, this fact is not enough to conclude that the readability of Wikipedia articles is not good. We must dig deep and we must dig deep into the quality of Wikipedia articles. I argue that the background knowledge of the reader must be taken in, into account while calculating the readability of Wikipedia articles. This is because uh, Wikipedia serves users from varied backgrounds readers from all over the world read wikipedia so we must not assume any amount of background knowledge from the reader the article should be self-sufficient in knowledge that is why we have designed new readability metrics specifically for readability of uh, wikipedia articles so the new readability metrics that we have designed they are stylistic coefficient edit coefficient and knowledge gap parameter so let us discuss about these new readability metrics in detail so what is stylistic coefficient Stylistic coefficient captures the change in writing style of the editors. As we know that Wikipedia articles, they are collaboratively authored articles. So 
uh, it happens that once uh, one piece of information is written by one author and the other piece of information is written by some other author so what happens when there is a change in writing style then it hinders the comprehension of the underlying text how does it hinder according to the past studies the writing style can be captured using uh, like the number of peer stacks the number of function words or the number of punctuation symbols that a particular editor or author has used so it happens that uh, some of the editors or authors they use more of pos tags more of the function words okay when the number of function words and the number of pos tags they are more in text that means the author has tried to convey more information in the lesser amount of text when there is more information in lesser amount of text then uh, the reader he or she is not able to understand the underlying piece of text because there is more information in less amount of text that is how stylistic coefficient it is linked with the readability of the underlying text next uh, if we talk about then the next uh, new readability metric that we have defined is the edit coefficient so edit coefficient as we know that uh, wikipedia articles they are edited by uh, many editors okay so it happens that uh, some of the text it undergoes more editing as compared to the other text so uh, we state that uh, if the underlying text has undergone sufficient amount of editing that means that there are lesser chances of errors uh, like grammatical errors in the underlying text when there are lesser chances of errors or grammatical errors in the underlying text then the comprehension of under of the underlying text it becomes easier as compared the, to the text which has undergone lesser amount of editing because the text which undergoes lesser amount of editing there are higher chances of the text being of the text having more number of errors when there are errors then the comprehension of the underlying text it becomes very difficult after that uh, the third uh, new, uh, new readability metrics that we have coined it is the knowledge gap parameter so what is the knowledge gap parameter knowledge gap parameter basically captures the background knowledge of the reader as we have stated earlier that uh, the background of but the background knowledge of the reader shouldn't be assumed we shouldn't assume any amount of knowledge from the reader because wikipedia articles are uh, read by millions of readers around the globe so knowledge gap parameter it basically captures that there shouldn't be any knowledge gaps in the underlying text so what are knowledge gaps knowledge gaps they are the missing pieces of information that exist in the text as you can see in the example that uh, we have defined like there are three laws of motion defined by newton okay so many of you must be knowing who is newton etc but the thing is that it may happen that the uh, reader he may not know who is newton because he may not come from a science background he may come from a completely different background like art background so what we do in that case so in that case we should state that who is newton there shouldn't be any knowledge gaps in the underlying text the text shouldn't assume any amount of background knowledge from the reader okay so this is how we have coined three readability metrics for wikipedia articles first is stylistic coefficient second is edit coefficient and third one the most important one that is the knowledge gap parameter so what we did here using all these readability metrics new readability metrics we designed a classification model which helped us to classify the underlying articles into readable articles and non readable articles so we obtained a decent accuracy of uh, this model and we used svm model for this we obtained an accuracy of around 78% so as you, you can see this in this particular graph we can see a uh, clearly demarcation between the readable articles and the non readable non readable articles So now, now we hypothesize that the Q and A forum it can act as an app knowledge acquisition platform. If the readability of Wikipedia article is poor, then Q and A forum can help us to improve the readability of Wikipedia articles. That is because 
the underlying wikipedia articles it may have like why how when and what of information but it may not have who of information that is basically the knowledge gaps that we have discussed and the q and a forum it can help us to find out those knowledge gaps okay so what we did in order to prove that the q and a forum helps us to find out the knowledge gaps we divided the questions given in joc wiki into three broad categories first one is the homogeneous questions these are the questions uh, that are very similar to uh, the contents in the wikipedia articles uh, so this is an example of homogeneous question as you can see that the speech recognition code is given uh, in the wiki articles but again the student is asking about that we, uh, about that particular code in the q and a forum so this is an example of uh, basically homogeneous question next uh the next type of question that we have defined is the knowledge gaps now if we talk about the knowledge gaps so this is an example of knowledge gap as you can see in the wiki article uh the initialization of dictionary has already been given but the students are again asking the initialization of dictionary in the q and a forum but there is a difference in q and a forum the student is asking how to start the dictionary with the index 1 instead of 0 and that is not stated in the wiki article so this is basically a knowledge gap in the respective wiki article the third category is the heterogeneous question so heterogeneous question are those question which are completely uh, unrelated to the contents in the wiki article um as you know we deployed uh, this joc wiki for the joy of computers using python so in that particular course the students also used to ask assignment questions so those assignment questions were um, categorized in the category of heterogeneous questions so this is a summary of that uh, the three types of questions that we have defined for joc wiki or q wiki now if we discuss the results obtained so here joc wiki 1 2 and 3 they are different runs of joc wiki so as you can see that uh, the knowledge gaps they have the highest ratio in the q and a forums so we can conclude that the q and a forum in q wiki it helps us to find the knowledge gaps when it helps us to find the knowledge gap then it improves the readability of wikipedia articles when it improves the readability of wikipedia articles then it helps to acquire the knowledge given in the wikipedia articles and that is how q and a forum helps in knowledge acquisition of respective wiki articles in the importance of q and a forum in q wiki let us discuss the importance of wiki portal in q wiki So first of all, we'll discuss the literature in this direction. So, um, as given in the past studies, the questions on Q and A forums uh, they can be answered using Wikipedia as a knowledge base. So, uh, it has been proven that the questions that were given on Yahoo Answers they can be answered using Wikipedia as a knowledge base. similarly the questions given on quora could also be answered using wikipedia as a knowledge base and the questions on stack overflow were also answered using wikipedia as a knowledge base so wikipedia acts as an app knowledge base for the questions given in the popular q and a forums so it has been seen that uh, on q and a forums the discussions they grow to thousands of posts so what happens in this case that it becomes difficult for the user to revisit the information that he or she is seeking so uh, for in order to solve this particular problem zang et al they developed a system called wikum in which they uh, hypothesized that they can bridge the uh, gap between discussion forums and wikis using a wiki portal in that particular uh, portal called wikum they used to summarize the discussions given on q and a forums and they used to archive those discussions on the respective wiki articles so all these past studies they signify the importance of wiki portal in interaction with the q and a forum uh, as stated by zang et al that the discussions they grow up to thousands of posts so in that case the discussions should be organized or should be archived in an organized manner to the respective wiki article also wikipedia can act as a knowledge base for the various questions given on the q and a forums so now let us discuss the work done in this direction which is in the form of knowledge building 
so first of all let me tell you what is knowledge building knowledge building is the curation of new ideas as a result of the ideas that are present in the system so before heading towards knowledge building i will first discuss triggering so triggering is uh, the generation of new ideas okay as a result of the ideas which are already present in the system so we have uh, seen triggering in various uh, knowledge building systems and there are various theories that support triggering first of all is the lerman's theory of autopoietic system lerman's theory of autopoietic system it states that uh, ideas they are reproduced from the ideas that are given in the system autopoiesis basically means self reproduction so the ideas that are given in a knowledge building system they are responsible for generating more ideas into the system second is the piaget's theory of equilibration it states that whenever there is a new idea in the system and it creates the sort of conflict on un, or unrest in the mind of readers then it leads to generation of more ideas so uh, according to one of the past studies uh, done by chhabra et al uh, they state that triggering is also visible in wikipedia articles so what they do is uh, they take wiki links for uh, in given in the wikipedia articles for various revisions and then they calculate the semantic distance between these wiki links using google uh, distance so as you can see here like in 52nd revision islam is added and in 57th revision christianity is added so religions are added in like subsequent revisions so this is an example of triggering in wikipedia articles named india so now talking about the work done uh, the work that we have done in this direction is that we quantify the triggers in qwiki okay we basically divide the triggers in qwiki into two broad categories first one is the article to qna triggers second one is the qna to article triggers these triggers are in turn classified into primary triggers and secondary triggers so primary triggers they are more similar as compared to secondary triggers because in secondary triggers some more amount of information on top of the information given in the one knowledge building system is added to the other knowledge building system okay that is why secondary triggers are not so similar so now if we calculate the primary triggers and secondary triggers uh, in uh, geoc wiki then we can see that uh, we have like more of secondary triggers as compared to primary triggers but there is an interesting fact if we observe here if we observe uh, this particular graph uh, then we can see that if we have like enough qna to article triggers then there are less article to qna triggers that is because when we have enough qna to article triggers that is amount that is um, that means that sufficient amount of knowledge has been added to the respective wiki articles and it leads to lesser of questions that are being asked on the content given in wiki article that means it leads to lesser of article to qna triggers so now if we talk about the uh, article to qna triggers again then we can see that if we have less amount of qna to article triggers that means there is knowledge deficiency that exists in the particular articles and that leads to more of article to qna triggers so this is the uh, these are the results that we obtained for geoc wiki 1 and uh, now uh, we will discuss about the comparison of two discussion environments okay that is qna forum and the talk pages so now let us compare the two discussion environments so we already have a discussion environment in wikipedia which is called talk pages and we have qna forum in qwiki so in this particular section we will be comparing talk pages and qna forum so this is the typical interface of a talk page as you can see this is as good as a wiki article so if you know the wiki markup language only then you can edit the talk pages so first of all let us compare on the basis of conversational behavior so in talk pages as you saw that it is as good as a wiki article wikipedia article okay if you know wiki markup language only then you can edit talk pages but this is not so in our qna forum in qna forum uh, it has like a click and use interface so if you, if you click that you need to ask a question then you can ask a question if you click on the answer button then you can answer that particular question 
ओके सो क्यू एन ए फोरम इट प्रोवाइड अ बेटर कॉन्वर्सनेशनल बिहेवियर टू द यूजर्स एज कम्पेयर टू द टॉक पेजेस नेक्स्ट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द इंटरफेस ऑफ क्यू एन ए फोरम एंड टॉक पेजेस दैन अगेन क्यू एन ए फोरम प्रोवाइड दिस यूजर विद अ बेटर इंटरफेस एज कम्पेयर टू टॉक पेजेस A study done by Schneider et al. in the past states uh, clearly that the interface of talk pages is very very confusing, um, but this is not so in Q and A forum. Q and A forum has indented discussions, and it has click and use interface, so it becomes very very easy to use Q and A forum as compared to a Wikipedia talk page. then if we look at this comparison from knowledge acquisition point of view then again qna forum has better knowledge acquisition as compared to talk pages so we have already seen that qna forum promotes knowledge acquisition and there are many knowledge gaps questions that are being asked on qna forums but this is not so in talk pages as per the study done by vigis et al it states that only 8% of the queries are related to knowledge acquisition and rest of the queries they are related to like improvements in the article so now if we talk about the work done in this direction so if you see this graph then this in this particular graph it is shown that the editing in talk pages as well as the editing in the wiki article wikipedia article it goes hand in hand okay so left graph it shows the number of sentences added to the wikipedia article and in the right graph it shows the number of sentences added to the talk pages so whenever a sentence is added to the wikipedia article we see a sentence is added to the talk page also so the editing in wikipedia article and the editing in talk pages they go hand in hand next we see similar trend in q wiki also so this graph is particularly for goc wiki 1 so as you can see whenever there is a sentence which is being added to wiki article we see a sentence being added to q and a forum also so this is for goc wiki 2 and this is for goc wiki 3 but as an always there is a problem here so this particular graph is for wikipedia here you can see that the talk page is added to the wikipedia article or the first talk page edit it comes after like 1000 to 3000 days after the first wiki wikipedia page edit so there is a huge time gap after like 3000 days you get first talk page edit now if we look at q wiki for jsc wiki 1 2 and as well as 3 we see that the first q and a forum edit it is uh, it comes after like 2 to 4 days after first wiki page edit okay so this is very less as compared to 1000 to 3000 days so what is the probable reason behind this the probable reason behind this is that qna forum it provides the user with the very easy to use interface and the second thing is it provides the users with liberty of discussions in uh, wikipedia talk pages you discuss about the improvements related to the, related to the article but in q and a forum of q wiki you can ask any sort of questions you can also discuss the improvements related to the article so the liberty of discussions provided by the q and a forum in q wiki it uh, ensures that the q and a forum edit it comes very early as compared to the wiki article edit so next we compare the q and a forum as well as talk pages on the basis of ratio of triggers encountered so we we have already seen the q and a forum triggers and we see that there are many triggers that are generated from wiki article to q and a forum and vice versa so now if we talk about the ratio of talk page triggers that is being generated then we did a study on uh, in this direction also so in order to carry out the study what we did is that we extracted many features from the talk pages and its respective wikipedia article okay so here we have an edit text and a turn text okay so edit text is the edit that is being done in the wikipedia article and the turn text is the discussion that is being added to the talk page okay so the features that we extracted from this uh, sort of data set is uh, it goes like that 
So first of all, we extracted the similarity between the edit text and turn text. Then we extracted the similarity between edit comment and turn topic name. Okay. So in discussion, in topics discussion, we have a topic. So that is turn topic name. And in the respective Wikipedia article, we have an edit comment in conjunction with every edit. So we calculated the similarity between edit comment and turn topic name. After that, uh, we calculated the frequency of unigrams, bigrams and trigrams in the edit text as well as turn text. Then we found out are the edit user and the turn user same or are they different. And then we calculated the subjectivity of edit text. As we discussed above that Wikipedia talk pages, they promote neutral point of view. So in that case, the subjectivity should be very low. So subjectivity of edit text is also calculated. And last but not the least, we calculated the length of the edit text and the turn text. Based on all these features, we designed a classification model. We designed SVM classification model and random forest classification model. And this model helped us to classify the edit text and turn text as corresponding and non-corresponding. If edit text and turn text are corresponding, that means that particular turn text is being triggered from the edit text. If they are not corresponding, then the particular turn text is not triggered from the respective edit text. So as you can see, we achieved an accuracy of around 90% from SVM classification model and 92% for random classification model. And as per the results obtained, we obtained around like 10% of the talk page discussions. They are talk page triggers. And on the contrary, if we see QNA forum in QWiki, we get around 70% of the discussions on QNA forum, they are triggered. So again, here QNA forum wins the race. Now we have come to the last part of the presentation and we will be discussing the application of QWiki in an online learning environment. Okay. So we have seen uh, the discussion forums being deployed to MOOCs or online courses where uh, this is where the students ask doubts and instructors and teaching assistants, they answer their doubts. So we have seen many Q&A forums or discussion forums for various MOOCs, but we deployed a QWiki environment for MOOC and not just a Q&A forum. With the help of uh, this wiki articles, the students used to populate these wiki articles. So we proposed a model with which you can get a feedback from students about the lectures, about the video lectures. So whatever student has contributed to the wiki article, it is as per their understanding. Fine. And we also have the video transcripts where the instructors, they have tried to explain. So if there is any discrepancy between the instructor's explanation and the student's comprehension of the concept. So in that case, we can find the discrepancy using the wiki articles. Once we find the discrepancy, then this system can act as a feedback for the instructors. So in the past, there have been many studies uh, which talk about the feedback system. We have quantitative feedback, we have qualitative feedback also. The examples of quantitative feedback, uh, they are like um, the assignment scores, the exam scores that the, that the students have. Okay, So that act as a feedback system for the instructors. If the students, they have scored good, that means the students have understood or comprehended whatever they have tried to convey. But so this is a very like naive concept and there have been many shortcomings in such kind of feedback system. So as per the past studies, the instructors, they don't rely on assignment score and exam score as the feedback system. On the other hand, there have been some studies on qualitative feedback also. So qualitative feedback is extracted from the QA forums where the researchers, they have tried to discern that what are the concepts that the students have comprehended and what are the concepts that they didn't get it properly. So discussion forums, they act as qualitative feedback. So in this system, we propose that if we have like a QWiki setup, then it can act as an effective qualitative feedback system for the instructors. So this is the model that we propose uh, in order to discern the feedback 
from the students for the instructors so as we know we have a wiki article we have video transcripts from the uh, video lectures and we have discussion text from the q and a forums so what we do here is first of all we perform a ld topic modeling and whatever topics that we get out of this ld topic modeling we construct a co occurrence network out of it similarly for video transcript also we construct a co occurrence network and for discussion text also we construct a co occurrence network so what is co occurrence network co occurrence uh, network goes like this so if you have a sentence like ram has um apples in his bag so ram and apples they are like two nouns which are being used in this sentence so whenever you construct a co occurrence network for this particular sentence then there will be an undirected edge between ram and apples okay so once we construct a co occurrence network what we do here is uh, that we construct a induced subgraph of the important words here okay so when we have a co occurrence network out of this wiki article video transcript and discussion environment and we have some topics from ld topic modeling so these topics they act as important words so we in construct a induced subgraph of important words out of this co occurrence network we follow this same procedure for video transcripts also and for discussion text also fine after that there is an important thing that we should pay heed to so here we also construct a word to vec graph of important words in video transcripts see word to vec it describes the semantic similarity between the two words so it acts as the benchmark from for the comprehension of the students okay so this particular word to vec graph it acts as a benchmark okay so when we try to find out the difference between the benchmark and the subgraph that we have constructed for wiki article that actually tells us the discrepancy between the comprehension of the concepts and the intended delivery of the concepts fine so now in order to um, find the differences between the graph first we dis uh, first we construct the union of the video transcript as well as the wiki article we construct the union of the video transcripts network as well as the discussion environment and we also construct the union of word to vec network and video transcript network so this particular union of word to vec and video transcript network it acts as a benchmark and we want to uh, we actually want to find out that so which graph is near to this word to vec network whether it is the wiki article or the discussion text network if wiki article is very similar to this particular network that means the students have comprehended whatever is there in the video lectures very well but if this discussion text is very near to this particular video transcript network in that case um it is and then in that case it is concluded that that the students couldn't comprehend whatever is there in the video lectures and they ask more and more questions related to the videos in the discussion forum or the q and a forum discussing the results that we obtained out of this feedback system is that we calculate various graph parameters to calculate the difference between the various union networks we calculate like diameter we calculate uh various uh, centrality me measures like degree centrality eigen vector centrality between a centrality so in this way we calculate like 10 to 12 measures and uh the results for difference in diameter and union networks can be observed here okay so as we know that we used to have 12 weeks for qwiki so we have calculated the difference in diameter for various union networks for these 12 weeks so 12th week is not there that is because uh, for week 12 we didn't have any wiki article so based on the average difference that we obtain for of all the graph parameters we calculate the comprehension coefficient we calculated the comprehension coefficient for wiki articles as well as q and a forums so as you can see here if the comprehension coefficient of q and a forum is more then the comprehension coefficient of wiki articles it is very less that is because if the students couldn't comprehend whatever is there in the video lectures then they couldn't write on wiki articles due to that they asked more and more questions on q and a forum okay so that led to more comprehension coefficient for q and a forums so in that case the instructor he should he or she should improve the style of teaching 
but if the comprehension of coefficient of wiki articles is more for example in week 6 that means that uh, the students comprehended whatever is there in the video lectures and the feedback for the instructor is good for this particular week so in this way this particular feedback system can help the instructors to improve the respective video lectures so we can see that the comprehension coefficient that we have calculated it can act as a qualitative feedback for the instructors the instructors they can discern the discrepancy also that they observed uh, in the student's comprehension and the intended delivery of lectures so uh, now we have come to the last part of the presentation uh, so these are my publications these are the journals these are to be submitted and these are the conferences that we have so thank you so much uh, for listening patiently to this presentation thank you have a nice day